huh? Oh, oh, thank you, dear. Hope you're hungry. I made your favorite. Oh. Silly, haven't you forgot to bring Grandma Annie her plate? Oh, uh, are you sure she's hungry today? They are, aren't you, Annie, darling? Yep. Grandma Annie was my rock. I miss her something awful, but I think it's time. Well, she's still here. She's not going nowhere. <laughs> Looks good. Oh, oh, God, it's just you. <laughs> Yeah, just me. Ouch. No, no, not just like that. I was startled. I thought I was hearing things. <laughs> yeah, like what? We were just talking about my grandma and I heard a voice. I don't know. Well, that's silly. She can be in two places at once. Right. Well, those are beautiful. One for you and one for Annie. Oh, what a thoughtful young man. Don't you think so, Ivan? Quite, quite thoughtful. Yeah. And those are quite lovely. Thank you. So, Logan. You been scooped up yet? Hey. Nope, not yet, Mr. <laughs> Castile. Still available. Well, can I bang up some nails, hang these things up? Go ahead. You better be careful about him. He's gonna get snatched up before he hits the front porch. <laughs> you stop. I'm gonna be late for school. <laughs> Bye. Can I carry the teacher's books to school? Well, Logan Stonewall, you've used that line on me many, many times before. Yeah, even though it's hardly ever worked. <laughs> No, it was because I was ashamed of how poor we were. No, that wouldn't have changed how I felt about you. Well, I was conditioned to believe that the hill folk were the scourge of the town. And back in high school, you seemed to be a fancy town boy. Did I act that way? No. No, you were the exception, then and now. Well, it's an honor to help Winnerow's most popular new teacher make her way to school. And I'm available. Every morning. Yep. Every morning. <laughs> So, the new Castile Family Circus is coming through town on the weekend. You gonna go? Do I have a choice? I'm excited to see Tom. That's why I'm going. They've been traveling nonstop. Say, uh, you wouldn't need the company of a nice young fellow on Saturday night, would you? Why? Do you know someone? Just like the old days. We're buffed by heaven again. <laughs> In all seriousness, uh, I can't stop thinking about you. I know you're the one. I need to know if I have a chance with you despite our complicated past. You'll always be my first love, Logan Stonewall, but I don't want to rush into anything. I wouldn't want to make the same mistake again. Grandma Annie here was just saying she can't wait for the circus tomorrow night. Oh, that. Huh? Yeah, I know. It took a lot longer than we thought, but eventually he made something of himself. Oh, yeah, Annie. Sure, I've made all the difference. All the difference. I didn't hear her. Uh, what made all the difference? The money that he got for you children. Boy, with that chunk, he went down to Florida and... Finally made good his dream of buying a circus. I must have misunderstood her. Um, what children? What money? Your children. From the families that you went to. Luke took money for us? Yeah, for his troubles. So he split us up far away from each other for money, for his troubles. Well, your mother was dead and his wife Sarah just left him. So. Yeah, because he was a monster. He totally neglected his duties as a father and sold his children? No, he, he can't just get away with this. He can't live a happy, successful life with a new little family. He has to be punished. I'm gonna make him believe he's seen a ghost. And I know just how to do it. I know you're just trying to do your whole routine here, but I'm actually looking for someone. Well, let me guess. Who are we looking for? A handsome, strapping young man, maybe with uh, unforgettable eyes? Tom. 
Tom? I I didn't even recognize you. Of course, I heard your voice, but I didn't see you. Ah, yeah, there you are. <laughs> yeah, I barely recognize you with that wig and that get up on, but, you know, that smile I can never forget. So, uh, you're a, a clown. You're a clown? <laughs> yeah, I'm a clown. Tom, I'm serious. I don't know. I just hate to see your dreams take a backseat to Luke Castile's great idea to invest all of his money into a rundown circus. Especially after what he's done. I've been trying to tell you, Heaven. He's, he's not like that anymore. Did you know that he sold us? He sold his own children. Did you know? No, I had no idea. That's awful. But you know what? I can believe it. He was terrible back then. But he's completely different now. So you're just gonna forgive him? Why is everyone so eager to give Luke Castile a break? I mean, someone has to remind him that being a terrible father and a terrible person has its consequences. He doesn't deserve to be happy. Is that why you're wearing your Mother Angel's old wedding dress? To look like her? To make him lose his mind? Yeah. It's the same one she wore when she married him. If he sees you looking like your mother, who he loved more than anything, you could send him down a very dark path. Ever. That's the plan. Heaven, heaven, please. Don't do this. I understand why you're still so angry, but please find a way to forgive him for your own sake. Don't torment him or yourself, please. All the things that happened to us when we were kids. We shouldn't have come through that. But you're right, I... You're right. What am I doing? Angel? Oh, the gate! My angel. The, the lions escaped it! than you ever were. He was born better. Oh, this is all my fault. I should have been trying to forgive you. I should have been more like Tom. Did you ever say that? It's not your fault. Heaven, you were Tom's hero. I should be the one asking you for forgiveness. Now, would you come? You say hi to Stacy and Drake. Stacy, you remember Heaven? I'm so sorry about your brother, Heaven. He was a wonderful young man. And of course, our son, Drake. Drake, do you remember meeting your half sister, Heaven? Hello. Nice to meet you again, Miss Heaven. My goodness, you don't have to call me Miss. We are family after all.
Oops. Sorry. Well, so much for sneaking Excellent. in quietly. Pa, oh, I am so torn up that Tom is gone. Heaven, this is my boyfriend, Randall. He's rich, aren't you, Randall? Well, I wouldn't say. Yep, rich. We're looking for a place here in Winterall. Together. Well, congratulations. If you'll excuse me. Oh, I will not. You owe me an explanation. It's been years. You never got back in touch with me. About what? About Darcy? My daughter? You promised you'd get her back to me from the Reverend. And I went to his house, Fanny. A man raped me, heaven, and stole my baby. Did you even offer him the money? Yes. Yes, I did. But it's not about money. Everything is about money. No, no, it's not. Not to everyone it isn't, especially where children are concerned. Darcy needs a mother who will put Darcy's needs before her own. Reverend's wife is doing that. Can you honestly say you do the same? Oh, I see. You don't think I'm good enough to care for my own child. That's low heaven, even for you. How can you say that? I've always been good to you. I will make sure you pay for the way you treat me. Oh, it is just all so devastating. <gasps> Thank you so much for coming, Logie. Uh, of course. Heaven, I'm so sorry. I know that Tom was your rock. He was my best friend. I know I'm not Tom. I know I never will be, but I want to take care of you. I want to comfort you. I love you, Heaven. I've always loved you. This is really nice. I'd say. I've been thinking about us a lot lately. How great it is when we're together. I know I asked you once if you'd marry me five years ago. <laughs> I know we were in high school, so young, and I don't know if that would have been for better or for worse. But I guess we'll never know, because we can't go back in time. <laughs> I know one thing's for sure. I'm better when I'm with you. So, I'm asking you again, five years later, Heaven's Lay Van Marine, will you marry me? Are there any new RSVPs for our wedding party? Oh, this one's from Luke. He can't make it. His business plans. I mean, that's BS. If the Thomasons can reschedule their entire vacation, don't you think the man who raised me can at least make an effort? I'm sorry, I haven't. No wonder little Drake hasn't even responded to the postcards I've sent him. Luke probably didn't even show them to him. Why is there a letter from Tony? He says congratulations and... Okay, he regrets that he can't come because Jillian is so ill, but I didn't even invite him. I mean, I... Kind of maybe invited him. Oh, kind of maybe? Logan, why the hell would you do that? Oh, I just thought they were your grandparents. You might want them in your life. No, Tony is my step-grandfather. 
Well, I know that. I just thought you might want them. Look, why, why wouldn't you want them in your life? Oh, it says here they want to throw us a big party at Farthingale Manor. I'd rather not go back to Farthy. Even for a massive party? Just for us? Come on, it'd be fun. We could do it right after our wedding party in the barn. And get more gifts. You got the townsfolk and the hill folk all happy together. We never thought we'd see the day. Yeah. What a great day. <laughs> hey, Grandma Annie. Uh -oh. Oh. Uh, uh, uh. I'm so glad you agreed to come here and let your grandparents throw us a party. We'll only stay here a couple days, yeah? Absolutely. than expected. Bit of a lead foot, hey? Man after my own heart. Logan, this is my step-grandfather, Tony. Tony Tatterton. Such a pleasure to finally meet you, Logan. Likewise, sir. Oh, and my dear heaven. So lovely to see you back at Farthy. Oh. Hmm. I have missed you so. Come. Let me take you on a tour. This way. Can't wait. Yeah. Croquet lawn is just over there. We usually play in the afternoon. Of course, there's the pool. But if you want to go for a real swim, there's the sea, too. The pathway down is just over there. Now, let me show you where you'll be staying. <laughs> I've put you two in heaven's mother's suite. You remember that sweet heaven? For my money, it's the most beautiful suite in all the foggy air. him too. Terribly. Of course I blame myself. I know my brother killed himself because of what I did. I don't want to talk about this with you. Thank you for coming home. This isn't my home. Logan just like the sound of your little party. Does he even know who I am? You introduced me as your step-grandfather. Because you are my step-grandfather. I'm your biological father. Yes, and he'll never know that. No one will. Do you want to know why? Because I'm ashamed. I'm so ashamed of you. I'm ashamed of what you did. I loved your mother, Heaven. I loved her very much. She was your stepdaughter. And you are the product of that love. Love. You forced yourself on her. You raped her. Coming here was a mistake. I want to be a good father to you. I really do. I go with my arm. <clears throat> Where's my grandmother? She didn't come down to meet us. Jillian is not well. She doesn't leave her room much. 
You should go see her. Knowing that you're here might, might do her some good. Mais oui, chérie. Of course, I modeled in Paris. Oh. How dare you come back here after what you've done? I think I don't know you seduced my husband and ruined my marriage. Oh, no, no, no. It's, it's not Lee, it's heaven. My own teenage daughter pushing herself on my husband. Looking at him. I saw it. I saw the way you teased him with that beautiful young body of yours. How could he resist? No. It's your granddaughter. It's heaven, not Lee. Did you forget? No, I don't forget. I don't forget. Yeah. Heaven? When did you get back? <laughs> Is it the weekend already? How was your week at boarding school, my darling? It was good. It was really good. I think uh, I want to lie down for a bit. I think I should have a bit of a lie down. You can't have the beauty without the rest. to impress, right? Uh, impress who? Uh, these people. Shall we? <laughs> Good to see you. Hey, just keep your head on straight. <laughs> this world tends to suck people in easily. Don't worry so much, honey. No, all I'm saying is that people with money aren't necessarily happy. I'm good. I completely agree. What is this? Uh, foie gras. Yes, please. Okay, thank you. <laughs> I've never had foie gras. Mm. Well, didn't I say it would be spectacular? <laughs> oh, Tony, this is more than spectacular. This is amazing. Worth a stop over that. <laughs> and how? <laughs> Logan, why don't you get us three glasses of champagne? We'll kick this party into gear. Absolutely. You look spectacular. <laughs> this is only the beginning. There's so much more I want to give you if you let me. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming. It simply means the world to us. This is the happiest day of my life. And to be here surrounded by all of our, <laughs> our closest friends. <sighs> to, to be here for the marriage. My marriage to the love of my life. <laughs> Tony Tatterton. Oh, Tony, I know that your love will always remain true. And you so willingly, so willingly taken my daughter Lee as your own. Here we are. 
No, Tony, I can't. I've had too much already. Nonsense. One more special one from my private collection. Now, listen. Tomorrow morning, I must leave you for a work-related meeting. But we must discuss my business proposal upon my return. Uh, excuse me? Oh, my goodness. Did I neglect to tell you? I recently came across the most charming hand-whittled toys made by the people from where you grew up, Heaven. I believe they're called Willies? You know about the Willies. Oh, yes. I think they're charming and unique, and I think they'll be a big hit with a number of my customers. So I am proposing to build a factory in your hometown of Winnerow so the people there can make them full-time. That would bring so much work to the Willies. People are desperate for employment there. They are. And I can think of no one better to oversee and manage operations than the two of you, who already know the area and the people intimately. You two could be co-presidents. What do you say? Hmm. I'll tell you what. I'm going to let you two lovebirds discuss this privately. I don't want to put you on the spot. <laughs> You're amazing. I love you. You too. What's going on? We should go back to Winnerow. Now? Is everything okay? Is this about the nightmare you had last night? No. It's just the honeymoon's over, which was lovely, but we should go find a site for the new factory. And technically we're on the clock, so let's go, Mr. Co-President. Tony! You're home early. The staff called and told me about your plans. I couldn't bear the idea of you leaving so soon, so I came back. Please, before you go, let me show you something. These are plans to complete the East Wing, your new home. Your 
second home. I mean, you could split your time between Farthy and Winterell. Best of both worlds, no? Yeah, I'd say so. I hope everything looks to be to your liking. It's huge. You are as close as I'll ever come to having children. We can't accept this, Tony. I really appreciate it, but we're perfectly comfortable staying in my mother's old room. If there is going to be a Tatterton factory in Winnero, we should get started. Right away. Let's go. Logan, bring her back soon. Family is everything. And we are all family now. Bye, Tony. And this is the new larger break room that you asked for. The workers will be quite happy with it, Mrs. Stonewall. Great. And we mustn't forget they're the inspiration for this factory. It's not about the money, it's about the people, too. Of course, ma'am. With your approval, I could have the construction crew start first thing in the morning. Approved. <laughs> okay. said her plumbing was out and she came over here to shower. How was I supposed to know y'all were back in town? You don't tell me nothing. Logan, would you please step outside while I talk to my sister? Why are you trying to seduce my husband? Oh, I never. Heaven, I have a boyfriend. Who keeps me quite satisfied, I might add. Is it even possible for you to speak without lying? Oh. Well, you would know all about lying, wouldn't you, sis? Telling me you would help me in the doing sweet nothing for years? You know, come to think of it, I guess you would know all about seduction, too. You're hardly an angel. Why? Why are you always so mad at me? Because you always try to leave me behind. Leave you behind? And all I've ever done is try to take care of you? <gasps> take care of me? Is that what you call it? You left me, Heavenly, after you swore you would look after me. You stood by and watched and let Pa sell me to that lustful reverend. And then you go and live like a queen with your fancy rich relatives. And then you go and say the most awful thing to me, that I wouldn't make a good mother to my own child. Well, money has changed you. No. That is not true. You know, actually, I do want to confess one little thing. It's true. I find Logan attractive. I always have. And he sure was enjoying my little show before he heard your car pull up. The truth is, I asked him to get me a towel. And he said, why don't you come over here and get it yourself? But is that it? Are we done chatting now? Hey. Hey, where are you going? Heaven. 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 Pokey, just leave me alone, please. Where are you going? I don't know. I, I just, I don't know where I belong anymore. With me. You belong with me. How could you betray Heaven. me? Nothing happened. Heaven, look at me. You know me, and you know Fanny. She's incapable of telling the truth. Nothing happened, I swear. All right, we, we can go. We, we can go back to Farley, but we're doing it together. Because you're my wife, and I love you.
the crew is working doubly hard because they're so excited about the factory. Um, we're thinking 15 toy makers to start and 15 support staff. My, you two are making me look like a genius. Nice work. Logan, I feel like you should head back down right away to oversee the project, make sure there aren't any hiccups. Absolutely. And Heaven, I was hoping you might stay. Oh? Jillian has gotten worse since the party. Every time she sees me, she has another episode. I was thinking maybe if there was another family member here to help the nurse, we might be able to calm her back down. She does love you very much. So, Heaven, will you stay on for your grandmother? Okay, I'll stay. It's yours now. What is? The sickness. What sickness? Oh, sickness that my mother gave to me and I gave to your mother, Lee. Oh, Jillian, what are you talking about? At constant fire burning inside, that heat. That burning heat always, the desire. Listen to me. Listen to me, woman, child. I know from experience, the more you try to run away from it, the harder it will chase you. The fire inside of your body will burn you alive if you don't give in to it. Believe me, Heaven, tearing myself away from you. That was the hardest thing I ever had to do in my life. But I knew that it was right. Tony is my brother. He is your father. Stop. I am your uncle, your blood relative. I don't want to hear this. But you must. You really must. It's been so hard to be away from you. I thought you killed yourself. Don't you know what that did to me? I missed you. I've missed you too. Every day. I haven't been able to stop thinking about you even for a moment. When I heard you were back in Farthy, I just I couldn't help myself. I had to catch a glimpse of you again. And I thought that maybe if I could just... If I could just be near you, then maybe it would be enough. I'll never forget last night. But I'm married. I'm married to Logan, and we're happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs>
We have to be stronger. Goodbye, Troy. Goodbye, Evan. I'm sorry. Forbidden love. Last night feels like a dream. I will never forget it. But as last night proved, we simply cannot be together without needing more. We will never see each other again. But you will always be with me, and I will always love you. Forever. Troy. gift for time and what can I say? Penny, what are you doing here? Well, hello to you too, dear sister. Long time no see. My condolences about your fancy grandma. I hope the funeral was a sufficiently classy affair. <laughs> so sad, really, you know? I'm sorry to barge in and whatever you got going on here, but I won't be long. I just came to tell you, you don't have to worry about going back to the Reverend for my baby anymore. Not that you were ever actually gonna. <sighs> okay. Well, aren't you gonna ask me why? Why? <laughs> because I have a new baby. All to myself now. <sighs> That's right. I got a bun in the oven. Guess who the daddy is? Randall? God, you are no fun! <laughs> oh. You should have been here, Heaven. You should have stayed in Winnera. You should have taken more interest. Interest in what, Fanny? Interest in your husband? What does Logan have to do with any of this? You don't? It's Logan who made me pregnant. That's what. <laughs> yeah, I'm having your husband's baby, not you. <laughs> I told you you would pay for the way you treated me. <laughs> Life sure has a way of biting you in the ass, don't it? <laughs> it smells great. You have a wonderful night, sis. <laughs> What is that divine smell? Could it be that my wife is home and she's cooked? Is everything okay? Is there something with Tony? Company? 
It's actually something with Fanny. Fanny? What's the matter? I think you know what I'm talking about. No, I really know. She's pregnant, Logan. And I'll take your silence as a confession. Of what? <laughs> that you made love to my sister. Love? It wasn't love, Heaven. Don't play word games with me. Just tell me the truth. She came over one night when you were at Farthy. She kept telling me how lonely she was, pouring me glass after glass of wine, and asking me, aren't you lonely too? I don't know, Heaven. I, I can barely remember any of it. You don't remember? I was drunk. I missed you. It was a mistake, Kevin. A terrible, terrible mistake. One night. I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? Will you ever be able to forgive me? Times I could really use your advice. Part of me feels like my anger is justified. Because Logan, my husband, was with Fanny. Fanny, of all people. But in truth, it's no different than what I've done. What I did with... with Troy. So how could I possibly not forgive him? In fact... by not being honest with him, I may be... it may be worse. Heaven, I will do anything. Shh. I forgive you. You do? Just like that? Yes, I forgive you. It will never happen again. I know, but it happened. And it's over, but we have to discuss the consequence. Okay. The baby, Logan. We'll have to send money to Fanny so that the child can live well. And we all have to discuss as to what degree you'll be involved in the child's life. We'll... We'll figure that out. I still can't believe how well you're taking all of this. I just... I can't talk about it anymore, though. Okay. Can I kiss you? Sorry, Heaven. I want to make this up to you. No, no, I... I can't... I can't do this right now. But we'll make it through this. Okay? As long as you agree to remain silent about the truth of the father, we will cover all costs of the baby's medical needs during the pregnancy and birth, as well as food and supplies once the child is born. And what about me? What about you? We're providing for the child and its needs. Well, its needs include me. I ain't just some pincushion to prick and poke and forget about. As this baby's mama, I mean to be treated as a lady with class just like you. Don't forget. Your man came to me 
because you weren't taking care of him and now there is hell to pay. I'm the one gotta live with a child now, ain't I? And what about Randall? I don't got time to go looking for a new man. Who will even want me now? Tell Randall it's his. He wants kids, doesn't he? And that's gonna cost you. So what do you propose? How much do you want us to send you a month, Fanny? Well... I don't know. Fifteen, huh? No. Two thousand. Two thousand a month. Provided the paternity remains a secret and Randall believes he's a father. Oh, that part cost another five hundred. Better make it twenty-five hundred, because, I mean, Randall kind of shoots blanks. Well, then tell him it's a miracle. Make him believe. Twenty-five hundred a month. Hey, you have always acted better than me. Even when we was all poor, you acted rich. But I know why. Because you were always jealous of me. <laughs> of you. Because Pa liked me, and not you. Pa held me. Pa kissed me. He treated you like you never belonged. Because <gasps> your burden killed his precious angel. <sighs> you killed your own mother. And you can't ever run away from that heaven. Never. I forgive you. You might not know it yet, but I know it better than anyone. That rage comes from the pain that Pa caused. The Pa who you claimed loved you so much. And Tom was right. Not being able to forgive has turned me ugly inside. It's the same rage that's making you ugly. <gasps> If I'm so ugly, how come your husband You've done a begging? horrible thing to me, Fanny. But by forgiving you, you're no longer able to keep me prisoner. Neither is Pa. So I'm ready to honor Tom's dying wish and forgive you. Forgive Pa. Forgive myself. So thank you for this. To go. It's all settled. That's great. What's this? It's a letter to Pa. I've finally forgiven him, Logan. Heaven, that's huge. I know. And I think Tom would be really proud of me. I was just inviting Pa to come visit, if that's all right with you. Oh, yeah, of course. Good. It all feels so... so... Congratulations. Heaven, this is amazing. We're pregnant. You've made me so happy. We're having a baby! <laughs> what a wonderful day, huh? Heaven's got a brand new grandbaby coming, just for me and you, Annie. And what with Luke coming down from Florida for a visit, well, we're just so happy. <laughs> well, I'm happy you're happy, but Blue Castile has already canceled on us twice. So let's not get our hopes up. My boy will be here. Who's Arthur Stein, Esquire? Esquire, that's a fancy-ass name. It's probably for heaven. <laughs> no, actually, it's for you, Toby. Me? What'd you say? It's, uh, it's 
says Luke and his wife were fatally injured in a car accident. Well, are they okay? Are they going to be here next week or? Fatally, Toby. They didn't make it. I'm so sorry, Grandpa. That fancy ass ass car, guys, he's mistaken. I don't think it's a mistake. <laughs> Come on, Annie, let's go for a walk. Come on. Please, just. Drake survived. Who's gonna take care of him? Drake, I thought it was important for you to understand that your family stretches far and wide. What is this place? Museum? No, no, this is the Van Vereen Tatterton home. And I brought you here because I want you to know you're a part of this family too. Yes, you're Castile and we Castiles are from Winterell, but I'm a Van Vereen Tatterton on my mother's side. So as your half-sister, I need you to know that you belong in this world, too. I do? Ah, there they are, finally. Do you feel okay after your flight? Yes, so I it just... So is true. I just wanted... <laughs> we have a guest, remember? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I still think someone else could have taken him. You need to look out for your own now. He is my own. Luke Castile wasn't your flesh and blood. But everyone thinks he was, which is why I have custody, so let's keep it that way. Understood? No one can take care of that child the way I can. And I've started the official adoption process, and family, as it turns out, isn't about biology. It's about being good to one another. I'm sorry. What a pleasure it is to meet you, Drake. Please, make yourself at home. Now, my cook has made a cake to celebrate this happy event. The happy event that is Drake's arrival, yes? Yes, yes, of course. Drake, do you like cake, young man? Yeah. Yeah? All right. Let's go get some. Tony? a letter from Luke's lawyer. Heaven, well, you're up late. Is everything okay with the baby? How many secrets are you still keeping from me? Let's start with what I already know. You bought the circus that employed Luke, then turned around and sold it to him for a dollar. Handing him his dream come true. Only on the condition that he never speak to me again. It's not like it sounds. It's exactly how it sounds. Like how you single-handedly kept the man who raised me from coming to my wedding. And kept me from ever being able to reconcile with him so that you could remain the only father figure in my life. You are a selfish, lonely, controlling, miserable, and evil pig. <sighs> now... You are going to call Mr. J. Arthur Stein immediately to sign over all ownership of the circus to a trust in Drake's name. No conditions. Of course, heaven. But understand, whatever I did, I did out of love for you. This isn't love. 
You let me believe that Luke didn't care for me, that he didn't want me, that he never wanted to see me again. Well, let the punishment fit the crime because you will never see me again. Drunk, so you need to get out of my room. Shh. I know you're upset about what Jillian said. But she's just jealous. She's jealous of your beauty. She's she's jealous of the connection that we have. She's she's jealous of your beautiful body. Tony, I'm your daughter! <coughs> coming back here again. Home to help plan the party for the workers. The factory is such a huge deal for this town. The party needs to be spectacular. I'm thinking black tie, string quartet, servants, and maybe we can even get some foie gras. Are you even hearing yourself? You're sounding more and more like Tony. Is that such a bad thing? I mean, he's a classy guy. <sighs> Look, I just think something that exclusive will alienate the Hillfolk. And we should have a party that celebrates them and their culture. The whole reason why these toys are being made in the first place. You're absolutely right. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I'll call Tony and make sure he's okay with everything. No. No, you won't. He'll be okay with whatever I say. You don't want to involve him at all? Nope. Why have you been so harsh towards Tony lately? I mean, I know he can get on your nerves, but he's done so much for us. Did something happen? Well, you could say that. When I was at Farley, he crept into my room and tried to touch me. He what? He's your grandfather. Hey, look, I'm fine. I fought him off. Nothing actually happened. He was just drunk and thought I was someone else. Who? Jillian? When I first introduced you to Tony's world, I told you, all that glitters is not gold. I'm so sorry, I shouldn't have been there with you. No, you were overseeing business and I thought Drake might want to see Farthy. But we're never going back there. Ever. Why don't you try concentrating on any last minute details we have for the factory party? And Logan, try to find someone else to model yourself after. Hey everyone, welcome to the Tatterton Toy Party. Enjoy yourselves. And how are we doing over here? Right, this is so fun. You hungry? Hey, Heaven, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. I think I just need to sit down. We should head home. Yeah, yeah, it's past Drake's bedtime anyway. Thank you for coming.
Where did he get off to? Drake? Drake! Where'd he go? I know where he is. Where is he? Benny, how could you do something like this? Oh, hi, Heaven. Damn you! What? Heaven, what are you doing? Stop. Heaven, Randall, 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 Where is Drake? Randall ain't gonna tell you nothing. Randall? You two will have to work this out between you. <sighs> but I will say, Fanny has just as much right as you do. Oh, I have more right! Paul loved me more than you and he would have wanted me to be a mother to Drake, not you. Not in a million years you hated Pa. And now Drake knows that too. What have you been telling him? Oh, I told him everything. I told him what you are, and you dressed up as your mother to punish his Pa, and how it's your fault Tom was killed. He thinks you made his Ma and Pa go to heaven. You've been telling him stories, trying to turn him against me? You can't do that. You can't keep me from seeing him. You can't. I I've called the police. They're on their way right now. Oh, that's just fun. Mm -hmm. We've already been talking to a lawyer. Says that Daddy never left a formal will specifying guardian, so I have just as much right to Mother Drake as you. Especially now, with Randall and I getting hitched, we have a good and proper home for him. So I guess we'll see you in court. Don't do this, Fanny. Don't use a child's life to fight your proxy war with me. I don't know what you're talking about. I just brought a child home to his own people, where he'll stay. You've done it now. Done it now. Everything's gonna come out in the open. Can't wait. As your lawyer, I need to tell you that you need to be prepared that this court case is gonna air all your dirty laundry. Whatever it takes, Miss Lakewood. I, I think we need to take a moment to consider if this is our best course of action. Would you just man up and stop acting like Minnie Tony? Well, I hope you're right. I just don't think it'll be very comfortable for us if our entire personal life gets aired out in front of the entire town. It might shock people. It might hurt people. Like who? Well, my mother, for example. Well, you weren't too worried about your mother when you were screwing Fanny! <clears throat> Sorry. That's all right. I just need to be clear to both of you that nothing matters more to me than getting Drake back. Be seated. Court is now in session. Your Honor, the prosecution calls Fanny Castile Wilcox to the stand. It's not too late to give up. This isn't a game, Fanny. Of course it is. It's Wilcox. How long have you been married to Randall Wilcox? Two days. Did you marry Randall Wilcox quickly before the court date, only so you would appear to have a proper home for Drake? If you're trying to say this is a phony marriage, it ain't. Randall and me figured it was time to tie the knot. And we do have a proper home. You can have a proper home without being rich as heaven, can't you? <laughs> Mrs. Wilcox, how did you come to have Drake in your home? Come to have him? Hmm. Well, I picked him up and took him there. From the Willie's factory shindig. Heaven and Logan were off party and wasn't no one paying attention to little Drake. You just picked him up without telling anyone. Well, he's my brother. And didn't no one ever talk to me about flying him to a castle in Boston? Try to lure him with fancy toys and a fancy life? Money shouldn't have anything to do with what makes the best home. Your witness. Mrs. Wilcox, this baby you're carrying, whose is it? It's his, Logan Stonewall. He made me pregnant. Mrs. Wilcox, did Randall know that Logan Stonewall made you pregnant and has been paying for all the costs before he married you? Yes. He did. 
And is this your first child, Mrs. Wilcox? Nope. The Rev knocked me up. <laughs> he convinced me to keep it so he and his wife could raise it as their own since she could never have kids. He said he'd pay me for the baby and I accepted his offer. Then, later on, I changed my mind. I wanted it back. <laughs> you say you wanted it back? Sure thing. Heaven came, visited me in Nashville. I was a bit older then and I'd realized my mistake. I asked her to buy my baby Darcy back for me from the nasty Rev, and she wouldn't do it. And why not? Because she has hated me. Ever since she found out she had filthy rich relatives that would get sick at the sight of someone backwoods like me. She cut me off. No further questions, Cheryl. She is killing us. We are gonna have to bring him in. Go ahead. Reverend Wives, was Mrs. Wilcox's accusation true? Did you father her first child? Yes. And in a way, I am thankful to be relieved of the secret's burden. Reverend Wise, did you seduce Fanny Castillo? <laughs> Me seduce her? <laughs> no, ma'am, I did not. No one ever need go to the trouble of seducing that wicked, sinful girl. For she did steal into my bed with her lewd, naked body pressed against me. Liar! You bought me like Mrs. a slave Wilcox. when I was just a kid for 500 bucks from my daddy. You thought you could do whatever you wanted with Mrs. me. Wilcox. Come into my room, sit on my bed, talk to me, stroke my hair, stroke other things. Mrs. Wilcox, that is enough. Another outburst and you will be taken in contempt. Well, it wouldn't be the first time. Proceed, Reverend Wise. Thank you, Your Honor. Your Honor, I have never claimed to be anything more than an imperfect vessel for the Lord. A vessel of flesh and blood. But the devil is in that one, and that devil, sitting right there, did very craftily find a way to pierce the armor of my faith. And what would you say to someone who says it's your word against hers? Well, I would say is to look at her career choice in Nashville after she left us. <laughs> her career choice? Whore! She was a whore! Her old landlord called to inform us that she was caught in the act of prostitution several times. Did Fanny have any other options besides selling the child to you? Why, yes, ma'am, of course she did. She could have kept the child. She could have insisted that I help support her and the child. But she didn't, did she? So why do you think she didn't want the child? Because she only wanted the pleasure. The sinful pleasure and none of the responsibilities. No further questions. Court is adjourned until tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. I'd say rail one is over, and it was almost a knockout. <laughs> Thank you for seeing me on such short notice. Fanny's lawyer called me. He was meeting her today, after court, explaining she would most likely lose custody. At which point, she revealed, in a manner illustrating she did not understand its significance, that Luke Castile was not, in fact, your father. She told him that your real father was Tony Tatterton. Apparently, she has a letter from her late brother Tom, in which you confided this information to him. What? Uh, Tony. Um, Tony is her step-grandfather. Well, is he your father? Well, 
What does this mean? It means, Mrs. Stonewall, that you have no blood relationship to Drake Castile. Whereas Mrs. Wilcox does. Case closed. She will be awarded custody as soon as court is back in session. The lawyer says they ain't to talk to you or anyone till court tomorrow. Yeah, well, we're not going to court tomorrow. Can you please let this pregnant woman in so she doesn't freeze? Where's Drake? In his room? Yes, he's got his own room here, too. Where's Randall? Gone. Happy? The way he was talking, he'll annul the marriage just like you wanted. I didn't want that. I didn't want any of this. With custody of Drake and a child on the way, you'll... You'll be taking care of two kids all on your own. You think I can't handle it? Oh, I'm sure you can. But is that something you really want to do? What did you come here to tell me, Evan? I came to make you an offer. Okay. What kind of an offer? I will give you one million dollars if you give me custody of Drake. <laughs> well... I'll be... High and mighty heavenly has stooped to the very same thing she held against Pa. Trading money for children. The very thing that you were so angry about. That you went to take revenge only to get Tom killed instead. This is your offer? Yes. Sure, I want a million bucks. To get a taste of how you live in that castle of yours. But you really think this is just about money for me? <laughs> Isn't everything about money? This has always been about love, Heaven. Don't you think I want that too? Men have always loved you, Heaven. Not me. Not even Randall. Just some nice guy who thought he knocked me up. You know, I even tried calling Pa a few times myself in Nashville. He only ever asked about you. I thought, maybe he'd ask his own daughter if she wanted to come live with him and his new wife. No. My big sister, up in her new castle, did she want me? No. Fanny. Fanny, you can't force people to love you. You can only trust that it'll happen naturally. And you're gonna have a baby who will love you no matter what. And you love your baby. But I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for everything that I've done. I should have fought harder to get Darcy back from the Reverend. And I left you in Nashville. I did. I left you. And I was just so caught up in the drama of my own life that I ignored you for so long. And I'm sorry. I'll take the money. Oh, thank you. You can have a drink. It's better this way. And it's better for us. Turns out, we aren't even related one little bit. <laughs> and yet, Somehow, we are sisters.
little Drake. I missed you so much. Did you miss me? <laughs> this is your new little niece, Annie. Can you say hi? Hi. And this is your new, uh, cousin? Should we go with cousin? <laughs> your cousin, but her half-brother. It's complicated. Anyway, this little guy here is Luke. He's older than Annie, because I pushed him out first. <laughs> <laughs> here you go. You want to come say hi? Uh, look at him. Isn't he beautiful? You. Are you guys going to play together? That is Annie's first piece of mail. <laughs> oh, wow. What an interesting gift. It's so detailed. Somebody put a lot of time into this. There's no note or letter to say who it's from, though. Maybe Tony got somebody to make it as some sort of apology. Maybe. Logan. I love you. Your father made that. Life is complicated, baby Annie. More than anything, I... I just want you to be happy and to know you have a place where you belong and to have a wonderful and peaceful life.